Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial. In this video we're going to cover two factors. Uh, one will be how we can make something else appear on our screen when we're not currently looking at our target and the other on how we can build a rigged body. So in this video I'll be looking at using 2D assets. So you can sort of see here I have my little semi-channel mascot slash uh, split up robot I created in Illustrator a while ago and with this robot I have segmented it into its component parts and when I tap on those parts for example the head the head will be animated when I tap on the arm the arm will move and likewise with its lower body and each of these are essentially on separate planes and I had to create some uh, null objects to be able to control their pivot points. So I'm going to show you how this was created. Uh, bear in mind this won't be a complete breakdown because this took a few hours to actually get sort of how I want it at the stage and it'd still need a bit more work to get it with more refined. So if I look here at my target tracker, which is currently got this poster on, and the main plane. So the way I've worked this out is if I look at a human body or a body in general and segment it into its component parts, we have our body, which everything is attached to, which is our main parent. And from that, uh, we will have our component parts. So let's look at the neck pivot. So I wanted the head to be able to rotate across a its point of the, where it joins the neck. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, if I was to just use the plane as is, the head would just rotate around itself, which would not be desired. So if I actually just show you what I mean by this, uh, if I was to rotate it using just the head value of the plane, it would just rotate around the center of that plane, which is not what I'd want. So to work around this is I actually created a a null object and then I positioned this null object changing my view to front to be at the point where the neck and the head would coincide and then I simply parented my head plane to this central pivot point so where these two lines meet or these three points meet on the axis is the pivot point that I want to be able to control so if I was to just oops, uh, grab my neck pivot that I've created and try rotating this value. And I'm just going to have to break its uh, break its connection here for a second, so I can show you what I mean. And just hide that. If I just now rotate this pivot point, you'll notice that the head, which is attached to it as a child of it, is now following it, and the pivot is now exactly where I want it to be which is on the where the head meets the neck point. I, likewise I did the same for the pivot uh, for the antennae so I created another null object parented that to my head and then had my antennae plane parented to that because likewise if I was just to rotate the antennae it would rotate around itself and would detach itself but by having this null object uh, pivot I can rotate that null object around itself and the child will follow it a much here so I don't break that connection like so and essentially I did this to break up the entire body so I had the lower body connected so if I had legs I'd actually have to have hip and then top of leg uh, knee uh, sort of heel and then feet and I did the same with the arm, so I just created one arm, so I've got the left pivot point, which is at this point here where the L, um, shoulder would meet the ball joint. Then I had my upper arm plane, and then I had my, uh, another lower arm, another pivot point for where the um, elbow would be, and then another plane attached to that. So this, as you look here, I've got my breakdown of how this was created, so it goes null object plane, null object plane, no object plane. And this is how I can start building up a basic 2D armatures in Spark AR. Now, I have co kind of covered this in a previous video to a degree, but I just wanted to show you a bit more of a complex example. 
And then all I did is I simply used these pivot points to link into my switch and animation controls. So let's just scroll, zoom out this a little bit. So now every single time that that pivot point is tapped, it will start an animation or loop animation playing and then rotate my values from its starting position to its end position. You'll notice I've put a delay in here, so it actually my animation, uh, if I don't want to loop, will actually reverse itself after a period of time that is slightly higher than what my animation duration would be. And I, again, I've just made sure that my curves are according to how I want them to be, so I wanted this head to have this kind of janky, bouncy look to it, and I wanted the bottom half to have this sort of swinging effect going on. So that was basically how I created this robot and used null objects and planes to create pivot points where there was otherwise wouldn't be a pivot. But the main focus of this video is I wanted to show you how we can, using our target tracker, have other things shown on screen when we are not currently looking at it. So one of the slight disadvantages with Spark AR is when you're creating your effect for um, Facebook, you'll find that quite often uh, the instructions that you get given are fairly rudimentary. So you don't really have uh, an option to say scan this or tap that at the same time. So how do you get around this? So. So what I did is I just created a canvas. I then would have created my infographic. All I've done here is I've just used the target track of image because I didn't want to spend a lot of time creating an asset for the purposes of this tutorial. But you could create a, a nice looking uh, graphic to represent uh, what you want to scan or the fact that it is interactable in this filter. I then added my instructions as actual text. So again, you could make this into a nice visual design rather than me just using the default stock fonts. And what happens is when, oh, when I select my target tracker, I created a producer patch, which added the oh, target finder, the target select, which selects that particular target. And when that target, which is linked to my target selector is found, I wanted this to perform an action. So in my case, I wanted this to be when this target tracker was found, I wanted this uh, canvas to not be visible. So my canvas visibility set to not. So when, it, the, when the target isn't in view, it appears, and we, but when it is view, in view, it disappears if that makes sense. And it's important to iterate your instructions to your user, make it clear what they have to do and how they interact with your scene, uh, because sometimes filters don't actually have enough instructions in there and people could be missing out on what is desired, especially with those target tracking effects. So I just wanted to, this is a very, Sort of brief video just covering two topics one that was semi covered before but this time in a bit more uh, detail a bit more of a, a better example so you can see it uh, on a more complex armature rigging um, but also how we can use target finders to toggle things on and off in your scene depending on whether that particular target has been found likewise you could play about with uh, having the target tracker when it is found, actually adjusting the position or scale of other objects in your scene. Um, and like I've sort of highlighted before, we could use the camera to actually toggle whether it is a front or rear camera active. Uh, I have had comments about when people have been recording that sometimes uh, things have become invisible. Uh, so. In order to fix that, you'd need to link your video recording uh, option up to the visibility of your object that otherwise would become invisible. Because by default, um, when you're recording a video, certain artifacts will disappear. And that's to do with basically the filter thinking and Facebook thinking that you don't want that to be shown. If that isn't the case, you will need to link them up to your camera's options down here. Whether you want it to be visible 
or not visible, well, depending on whether you need a not gate or not. If that makes again, if that makes sense. So I hope this has been of some use, and I will aim to do more videos in the future. Um, in terms of the Spark AR content videos, I will be slowing them down a bit and focusing on other software for the next few weeks. I will be again trying to comment, uh, reply to all comments I get, but there is a bit of a backlog, so please bear with me. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to support my channel. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.